Hello friends, Sumit this side. As I mentioned, I am about to start a big data interview series where I will be covering most important interview questions. And I am sure you will find it really, really helpful. So I am going to start with the very first question in our series. Now, a lot of interviewers ask, let's say you are using PySpark for one of your project. How are the initial number of partitions in your data frame determined? But they can rephrase the question in many ways that let's say you are creating a Spark data frame, how many initial partitions would be there? Now whenever someone asks you this question, you do not have to give a direct answer, rather you have to explain them the thought process you have. And this thought process will really showcase your skills. So you can explain it with various examples. Now you, whenever someone asks you this question, you have to say, while determining the number of partitions, the thought process should be that all the resources should be used plus we are not even handling our a very big partition size, right? So it's something like we are handling a partition which is 128 MB or lesser by making sure we are using all the resources we have. Let me explain you with an example. Consider you have a file which is slightly over 1 GB. 1 GB is not something which you would process in big data world, but just for demonstration, you can think it this way. Consider you have a file which is slightly over 1 GB and you have requested for two executors, each with some GB RAM and two CPU cores, let's say. Then how many CPU cores you have totally? You have four CPU cores with you. Now, your parallelism at any point of time cannot be more than 4. It can be less than 4, but it cannot be more than 4 because you have totally 4 CPU cores. Now, if let's say 4 partitions would have been created, it would be a partition of roughly 256 MB, but that's quite big, right? So what Spark has an intent, Spark has a property called as max partition bytes, right? And by default, that is set to 128 MB. This means a partition can be at the max 128 MB to start with. And this property can be tweaked if we want. I hope this is clear. So in our case, since we have four CPU cores, then of course, it's not that we will have four partitions because then the partition size would be 256 MB and all, which is above 128 MB, which is the mentioned limit. So in this case, our partitions would be of 128 MB, which is the max partition bytes, and we will get 9 partitions. 8 partitions would be around 128 MB. The last partition would be slightly smaller because we have data slightly over 1 GB. Right? So you have 9 partitions in this case. Right? So how many partitions can execute in parallel? It will be 4 because you have 4 CPU cores. Now let's take another scenario. You have a file which is slightly over 1 GB, same thing, but you are requesting for 6 executors with 2 CPU cores. So, total you have 12 CPU cores. Let's say if you would have gone with 128 MB partition size, then you would have got 9 partitions. Then don't you feel even though you have 12 CPU cores, only 9 will be occupied and 3 will be sitting idle. So, in this case, what Spark will do, Spark is intelligent and will try to create partitions of smaller size and it will have 12 partitions and the partition size would be whatever 1 GB divided by 12 and that would be somewhere around 100 MB or something. So you see the intent. The intent is all our resources are used wisely plus we are not even handling a partition size which is very big. Now, Whenever someone asks you this question, three scenarios can come. Number one, when we are talking about one single large file. Number two, when we are talking about multiple small files. Number three, when we are talking about one single file, but which is not splittable. Right? So when we are talking about one single large file, I have already talked about it, that max partition bytes and Number of CPU cores, based on this, your partition, number of partitions will be decided, right? For example, if you have 12 CPU cores and 1.1 GB, 
then you will have 12 partitions. If you have 1.1 GB and if you have 4 CPU cores, then you will have 9 partitions, right? So I hope this should be clear. And whatever number of CPU cores I am referring to, you can check it with default parallelism. There is a property where you can check the default parallelism in Spark and it will be equivalent to number of CPU cores you hold that time. I hope this is clear. The second scenario is you have one single file which is not splittable. Now you might be thinking in what case it would be. Let's say you have a CSV file which is snappy compressed or GZ compressed, whatever it is. These are non-splittable files. That means if we split the file, it will be corrupted. So in such case, it, is, it will be one single partition. And you know that when we have one single partition, and even if you have 10 CPU cores, everything will be sitting idle. Only one task will run, which is a very, very bad scenario. So you should not use compressions or file formats which are not splittable. The third thing or third scenario would be, let's talk about you have multiple small files. Let's say you have 500 small files, which is around 2 MB. Each file is around 2 MB. You have 500 such files. In such case, of course, you will not have 500 partitions. Rather, multiple of or, or many of such files will be clubbed into one partition. So each file is 2 MB and there is a property called as open cost in bytes, which is slight overhead to open a file in terms of adding up and all, right? So open cost in bytes is around 4 MB and each file is around 2 MB as I mentioned. So total 6 MB. Now, if we if we take around 21 such files and put it into one, it will be forming a block of around 128 MB. So 21 such files can be put into one partition. And if you divide 500 by 21, you will get around 24 partitions in this case. So I hope you understood the thought process that we do not want to process a block or, or a partition which is too big. Also, on the other hand, we do not want to waste any resources. We want to leverage all the resources that we have. And that's the thought process in determining the number of initial partitions. And why it is so crucial? Let's say if you have 100 CPU cores and you have 20 partitions, then only 20 tasks will run in parallel, even though 80 of CPU cores are pending and are waiting for doing some work, but we are not giving any work. So that's where the number of initial partitions play a very important role in defining the parallelism that we get and Spark do a very good role here to determine that so that all our resources are wisely used. This is a very, very important interview question and if you explain them this way, I am sure the interviewer will be convinced because at the end, it's not that you buy hard things. All that matters is your thought process that how you know the internals of Spark which is truly something the interviewer want to see. I hope you like the explanation and with this uh, we are done. In the next video we will come with more interesting question. If you have liked this video hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and just put a comment what next video you want. Thank you.